Hey everyone, the return to home function is arguably one of the most important safety features on a drone, so you'd expect it to work flawlessly in any situation. But what if I told you that there are a few strange problems with return to home that you probably never knew existed? In fact, even the official DJI guidance doesn't seem to mention some of them. While some of these scenarios are quite unusual, they could completely prevent your drone from being able to return home. In this video, I'll go over these uncommon scenarios with return to home, how negative return to home actually works and when it causes problems, when you might experience issues with return to home, and most importantly, how you can avoid losing your drone because of them. Let's jump right in. So first of all, what actually is negative altitude return to home? It's when the drone is below its takeoff point when return to home is activated, like when you launch from a cliff or a raised platform and you descend during the flight. Before we can dive into more complicated scenarios, it's a good idea to do a baseline test to see what we should expect to happen during a negative altitude return to home. To do this, I'm going to fly the drone down this mountain until we get a decent negative reading. The drone is hovering at an altitude of minus 27.4 meters, which means that it has descended below the home point by about 27 meters. When I press the return to home button, the drone starts ascending to the preset return to home altitude, which in this case is 40 meters. You can see that the drone briefly pauses at 20 meters to adjust its orientation and then flies up an additional 20 meters. Once the drone has reached 40 meters, as you'd expect, the drone flies over to the home point in a straight line. When the drone is directly above the home point, it adjusts its orientation for the final time so that it faces the direction it faced when it launched and then begins to descend. Now that we've seen a basic example of a negative altitude return to home, it might seem as if this will work all the time. However, there are a few situations where after return to home is activated, the drone won't behave as you expect. In some cases, as seen in a minute, the drone won't return to home at all. The first problem arises when the drone tries to return home from a negative altitude and is closer than 50 meters to the home point. As seen in this scenario here, the drone is closer to the home point than 50 meters and is at a height of minus 11.3 meters. Let's see what happens when I press return to home. Even if I press the return to home button again, the drone cancels return to home. So as we just saw, the drone didn't fly back to the home point. Why was this? Well, let's break it down. The first noticeable difference to before was that the drone didn't fly upwards at all. According to the official manual, since the drone was less than 50 meters away from the home point and at a negative altitude, it should have flown up to a height of two meters and then flown back. However, as we just saw, this wasn't the case, and instead the drone just flew forwards straight away. Now, this is already problematic in itself. When the drone is at a negative altitude, like in this case, it would fly into the ground since it would try to fly back at the current altitude. And since the drone is below the home point, it has no way of returning home. You could also see that the drone seemed to cancel the return to home because of the obstacle avoidance sensors. As soon as the drone stopped, the radar was updated with an orange line which represented the ground in front of it. This to me is quite confusing because it once again contradicts DJI's official guidance. According to DJI, when flying forward, the aircraft will break if an obstacle is sensed from the front and will fly backward until a safe distance is reached before ascending until there are no more obstacles in front. Then it will ascend for two seconds before continuing to fly forward. As we saw, this wasn't the case during this flight. Instead, the drone cancelled the return to home and just hovered in place. Now you might be able to see why this issue can cause problems. If you for whatever reason lose connection with the drone and you're at a negative altitude closer than 50 meters from the home point, the drone wouldn't return home. Instead, it would most likely just hover in place until the battery ran out and then eventually land. Worst case scenario, imagine if your drone was over the side of a cliff. You'd never see it again because of this strange problem that even DJI doesn't seem to mention. The next situation where return to home won't work as you'd expect might sound strange, but is by no means to be forgotten about. It occurs when the drone is closer than 5 meters to the home point. Yes, you heard that correctly, 5 meters. 
It does seem strange to activate return to home when the drone is closer than five meters, since you could just land safely nearby, but this hidden issue is something you're going to want to know about. In this scenario here, I'm closer than five meters to the home point at a distance of 3.7 meters. You'll notice that if I press the on-screen return to home button, the only option that appears is to land. The return to home button has disappeared. Seems a bit strange, doesn't it? Let's see what happens when I press the return to home button on the controller. So the drone doesn't return to home, instead it lands at its current location. The system assumes that a return to the home point isn't necessary and that it's already close enough. Now, this might not seem like a big deal. After all, 3.7 meters is quite close. But here's the thing. What if I happen to have the drone hovering above water or over the side of a cliff or uneven terrain as in this scenario? You could just press return to home without much thought and the next thing you know, the drone has landed into an area where you might not be able to retrieve it. Let's now see if this problem still happens if the controller's connection to the drone is cut off. I've got the drone closer than 5 meters to its home point and I've moved it over a flat surface just in case it does actually land. I'm going to turn off the controller now and let's see what the drone does. So, as we just saw, the drone landed onto the platform below. This confirms that the drone will land even without any input from the pilot, which just goes to show that you really need to be aware of this changed behaviour when the drone is this close to the home point. There's no clear warning within the DJI Fly app telling you that this is going to happen, and that's just what makes this problem so easy to miss. It just silently switches from return to home to land. So what can you do to avoid this issue? Well, to be honest, there's not much you can do. You just have to be aware that this happens, and when the drone is closer than 5 meters, don't just rely on the return to home sequence to get the drone back. One thing you could do though is to manually set the home point to somewhere further away from where you're flying so that the drone returns to home as expected. Another thing is that this happens regardless of whether you're hovering above or below the home point. It's one of those small quirks in the software that is easy to overlook until it eventually causes a problem. The next issue is one that specifically concerns the Mini 3 Pro and relates to how the obstacle avoidance works during return to home. When the drone is closer than 50 meters to the home point, we already know that it will not fly up to the return to home altitude. This means that when the drone is going to fly back at its current altitude, it will likely encounter some obstacles. The problem arises when it meets these obstacles, so let's take a look and see what happens. Similar to when the drone was at a negative altitude, the drone cancelled return to home as soon as the sensors detected the obstacle in front of it. Once again, if I try return to home again, it keeps on cancelling. So it seems as if when the drone is closer than 50 meters to the home point, as soon as an obstacle is detected, return to home is instantly cancelled. The drone doesn't attempt to go around the obstacle as it should, but instead just hovers in place. The big problem here is similar to the issue at negative altitudes. If you lose signal for whatever reason, and you aren't able to reach the drone, it would eventually land due to the battery running out, and at that moment the drone could possibly be above water or uneven terrain. The last thing you want to happen is for the drone to get damaged while returning to home. What's interesting is that when you observe the drone from below, each time you press the return to home button again from the controller, the drone jolts and stops once again. This means that it's not as if the drone isn't able to process the command to return home, it just doesn't know what to do due to its software limitations. Finally, there's an unexpected situation that occurs when the drone is precisely 50 meters away. As we saw, when the drone is further than 50 meters away, it will fly up to the return to home altitude. When it's closer than 50 meters, it will try to fly back at the current altitude, which could be problematic. But what happens when the drone is exactly 50 meters away? Strangely enough, neither of the two situations here happen. Instead, the drone flies up to 20 meters and then flies back to home. I have no idea where this 20 meter altitude comes from or why it happens at exactly 50 meters away, but it's definitely quite an amusing quirk in the drone's return to home sequence. 
This doesn't really pose a risk to flight, and chances are you might not ever encounter this, but nevertheless, it's good to be aware of this difference in behaviour. So there we have it. As we saw, DJI's return to home sequence has a few limitations, with some being more significant than others. It's a good idea to remember these differences so that you won't be the one caught out by them. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this in the comments below, and if you have any interesting experiences with Return to Home yourself, I'd love to hear about your story too. If you found this video helpful, then please let me know by clicking the thumbs up down below. And if you'd like to see more drone-related tutorials which will help you get the most out of your drone flights, I recommend you check out my channel. Well, that's it for this video, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.